You know, you got Bon Jovi, you got Bruce Springsteen, you know, you got Queen Latifah, you got fucking Naughty by Nature. I come out here in 1997, I signed with an agent, and she goes, I need a bio. And I wrote from New Jersey. And this is Bruce Springsteen, is already, right, 97. Yeah. We got Bruce Springsteen, we got Bon Jovi, we got all these fucking people in New Jersey. And I'll never forget her calling me and saying, listen, I'm changing that jersey to New York. Didn't you say you went to grammar school in New York? And I go, yeah. She goes, I want you to change it to Hell's Kitchen or something. She goes, it's not cool to be from Jersey. She goes, wow. it's just not. It, people really don't. And I told David that. I go, once this show hit, everything changed. Now you could put that you were from Jersey. Yeah. And people were like, oh, shit. Like, it was that much of an impact. Like, it was that much of an impact. And after that, it was off and fucking running. Yeah. Is it bigger in Jersey than it is in New York? I mean, it's it's the fucking... It it's, represents It's them. the Bible in New Jersey. And really? they yeah. bought it hook, line, and sinker because that's your life in Jersey. Wow. Okay. Like, I, can, I, you, you can't, I can't go into uh, a deli in Jersey and get back in the car without somebody knowing. We're like in New York, I could, you know, whatever. But you know what's funny, too, is like a lot of people come up to me in New York and they're like, did we go to school together <laughs> or did we? And I'm like, you're fucking 58. Like, what did we go to school together? You know what I mean? Like, people always say they, they don't know where they know. You know, people are like, did you, uh, were you, were you on the fucking softball team and this? And I'm like, no. And I don't tell them, you know, why they fucking know me. But I just, and they look and they go, oh man, my, fr you know, I got, a, I got somebody on my team look just like, you know, they can't recall, uh, where they know me from. But in Jersey, and they don't, they don't look at me like, where do I know you from in Jersey? You know, the second they see you, because, I think that there's a lot of people in places where they go, oh, I did watch Sopranos 10 years ago, where anybody who likes Sopranos who lives in Jersey has not gone 10 years without watching Sopranos. No. No. They no. fucking, it's like it was, you know, it was, it was they're like, oh, it's fucking, you know, too, I watched, I rewatched the whole thing uh, just two months ago, you know, and they fucking, it's great, man. They, they love it. It's great. It's crazy to say that my career started because of The Sopranos. Because be before The Sopranos, I had booked a pilot for CBS as a Puerto Rican bartender in the Bronx. It was called Bronx County. And I booked basketball. I was a ref. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I was going out for big time auditions, but I didn't have the chops. But then I went in for Mad TV for the Soprano sketch. Right. The first time they did it. And that blew the fuck up. Yeah. Like, Will Sasso was a great Tony Soprano. Yeah. We had a great time on it. And then we were going to do it again. You know, the Sopranos kind of stopped us. Really? I guess Jamie Lynn was going to host. Oh, wow. And they were going to let Jamie do a sketch with us. But I guess the Sopranos was like, uh-uh, she could host. <laughs> but she ain't doing no fucking sketch, so we canceled right. the sketch. <laughs> but after the sketch, you have to remember that mob culture just blew up. Commercials. Yeah. You know, I shot maybe four commercials a year. And I would walk in and book the thing. I knew when I walked in, I was booking the thing because I looked just like pussy. Yeah. You know, I looked just like him. Pennzoil, fucking Sears had a mafia garage commercial. I did a battery commercial <laughs> for fucking somebody where we're digging the body up and you left the lights on to dig at night. And right. We went to start the car and the car didn't start. <laughs> and they're like, if you were to use this battery, these mobs. I mean, I shot <laughs> yeah. 20 nationals that we'd shoot, get paid for, and then they'd go, nah, the Italian American Foundation really? made them pull it. Bud Light, I did one with, what's his name? Uh, at the end, they ran over his head. The guy Frank that, Vincent? Frank Vincent. Yeah, we yeah. got taken off. I think his lasted the most out of everybody's. Like four of us did different mafia commercials. It was amazing the amount of mob action that was in this town. Yeah, I did a movie, You Got Nothing. It was all mob stuff that was just short films that paid. They would pay me, even though they had no budget, they would pay me because I looked like Vincent Pastor. Yeah, of course. It was fucking crazy. And then I went to New York. I was doing the New York Comedy Festival and George Jan's assistant was in the audience and she came up to me and she goes are you busy tomorrow you have to meet this lady she's gonna want to see you for sure and i went outside 
I was supposed to go to Buffalo. She walked up to me, Georgine, walking. We, she goes, can you leave a, a business card upstairs? Because we're looking for guys like you. And I go, I'm here at 11 o'clock. And we started talking. I read for Gigi. I read for Sharippa's part. I read for the cop who's opening up a pizza place now. The federal cop that used to... Oh. Him, I just bumped into him. He's opening up a pizza place. Out like, here? In Brooklyn. Oh, wow, He's going yeah. going back to Brooklyn. I read for that role. And David Chase's note was, keep sending me everything that you do. So then when Puss got killed off The Sopranos, he was going to do a show called The Mezzos about two gay mobsters. Really? ABC was developing it. ABC got cold feet and got rid of the project. They resold it to Fox. I did the short film, and then I sent that to Georgie, and then she called me in for Puss's brother, who was supposed to have four episodes. Right. But they sent the sides to the comedy store. <laughs> I was doing Spider-Man too. I was at Sony. So in those days, you got you had to, you had to be home to turn the fucking fax, the fax machine. Yeah. So I went to the store, got the sides, and the girl spoke to Sharippa. And I think Sharippa, by mistake, said my friends are auditioning for this uh, thing because Dom Herrera, and they called it lack of confidentiality agreement. Really? So we got fucking snapped. Get out of here. Yeah. that You know what's funny is like I hear, first of all, I think a reason why, we like I don't have social media. I don't do any of the fucking really? Twitter, nothing. Instagram, Facebook. I got nothing. And like I think about it now and I think about how, I, I think, uh, you know, like I see these shows like uh, Stranger Things on Netflix or whatever show and it's like, Hey, we're here now. Look, we're we're eating the fucking. This is what we're eating. This is what we're doing. Here's where we're standing. Oh, look, here's the. And I think the reason, uh, one of the reasons, one of the many why Sopranos was so good is there was none of that. None of that. You never saw us sitting around fucking smoking cigarettes, laughing in our pajamas because that's what we would do. You know, they would say you got a fucking hour, or when we would do read throughs, we would sit around it. There were no pictures of us anywhere. If you weren't watching me as fucking AJ and and and. Jim is Tony and everybody like, you know, she to people, she was Carmela. She wasn't putting up Instagram videos every five minutes going, oh, we're in the kitchen now. We're getting ready to shoot this scene. And, and I think that it just takes away from the intensity of like how like I think people watch this show, especially in New York, New Jersey. And they were like, no, that's Carmela. That's Tony. That's not where now today. I think it's like people know so much more about the fucking celebrities and then oh here's i'm not the, i'm having lunch with fucking jake and you know and we're here and then and it's just i think there's like and i think that's why now everything is shifting to fucking podcasts and actually knowing who people are instead of these i just think like the intensity of that like i remember somebody coming up to me once and asking if tony hit me and i was like what do you mean and they're like well does he has, has he ever like given you a real beating i go you 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 watch the show Whatever, whatever he, he doesn't hit me when the cameras aren't on. Like, what are you talking about? And they just like, they couldn't even understand what I was trying to say. Like, they were just so fucking caught up in like, they saw me in the street and they wanted to know if, if Tony like beat me. And I was like, it's whatever, whatever you see. Like, I don't even know how to answer this, this, this guy asking me this question. You know what I mean? Where now it's like. They would see us fucking on Instagram every day, you know, hugging each other and, and laughing and this. And they would never ask that question because they would know, you know, they would be like, oh, yeah, I saw you and Tony went to go get fucking, you know, uh, chicken fingers the other day. And th they would they would never ask something like that. Yeah.